Did you know that the most popular Greek mythological character got his name because he had swollen foot? Yes, the name Oedipus comes from Oedipus and means swollen foot. Why would someone get such a weird name? It had to do with a prophecy. The Greeks were all crazy about prophecies delivered by oracles. Just like we have our Vedachapada, the Greeks had oracles. So they used to sit in various temples and give, give out prophecies. The kings and the queens and the leaders, they all took the help of the oracles. The oracles kind of controlled the entire dynamics of a kingdom. So they were obsessed with it that we might think they ended up fulfilling it just by trying to evade it. Oedipus was the mythical king of Thebes. Just like Athens and Sparta, Thebes was a strong city in ancient Greece. The most famous version of the story of Oedipus was given by the playwright Sophocles. Sophocles was one of the three ancient Greek tragedians whose plays have survived. He developed plays by reducing the role of the chorus and introducing more actors. He wrote after Aeschylus and around the same time as that of Euripides. Three of Sophocles' most famous plays were about this great king and his family. Oedipus Rex. Rex means king. So the title reads Oedipus the king. Tyrannosaurus Rex. The king of dinosaurs. So Oedipus Rex. Oedipus the king. The second one was Oedipus at Colonus. Oedipus spends his last days as a blind man in the city of Colonus, which also happens to be the birthplace of Sophocles. The third play was titled Antigone. In the order of sequence of events, it is the third, but Antigone was written first by Sophocles. This play narrated the events with Antigone, Oedipus's daughter. This play narrated the events with Antigone, Oedipus's daughter, as the protagonist. Once a king loses his position or dies, there will be a revolt to seize power. This happens in Thebes as well. Sophocles builds on the ending of an earlier play written by Aeschylus, Seven Against Thebes. So he starts off where Aeschylus left. Since these three plays by Sophocles, they deal with the affairs of Thebes and its legendary king. They are called the Theban plays, the three Theban plays of Sophocles. What did Oedipus do to make him the superstar of Greek tragedy? The story begins with King Laes, who was the king of Thebes. This poor fellow was given a prophecy that he should not have kids as his child would kill him and marry his wife and cause the city's downfall. What a prophecy. Laes was a drunkard and one night, having lost his senses, does the deed with Jocasta, his wife. Thus, Oedipus was born to King Laes of Thebes and Queen Jocasta. Now, as the child was born, he knows he has to kill it, for it will be the reason for his device. So, on Laes's orders, the infant Oedipus was exposed on Mount Kitharon, with his feet pierced using a spike. So, he was put on a mountainside, hoping that the sun and the heat would, would kill the child. The infant's hands were tied and the ankles were pierced using a rod. This could have been done to hasten the death of the infant or maybe to prevent the ghost of the child from walking again. As a result of this injury to his feet, his feet became swollen. Seeing the state of this infant, a shepherd from Laes's kingdom rescued him, but he did not have the resources to look after the child. So he handed it over to the shepherd of a nearby city called Corinth. This shepherd then gave the infant to the king and queen of Corinth. This was King Polybus and Queen Merope or Periboa. Two names are seen, Merope and Periboa. Now they were childless, so the queen took care of the child and healed the swelling of his ankles. She gave him the name Oedipus as a result of the swollen foot. The word has the same origins as edema, to swell. The queen later gave birth to children of her own.
Thus, Oedipus grew under their care into a strong young man. He was ridiculed by his stepbrothers, posing questions about his aggressive nature and the mild nature of King Polybus. People began to ask questions and doubt if Oedipus was truly the son of King Polybus and Queen Merope. Oedipus knew something was not right. What is it? His mother is not saying anything. So he goes to the oracle of Delphi to find answers. The oracle warns him not to go to his native place as he will murder his father and marry his mother. Oedipus does not know he was not born in Corinth and that Polybus and Peribua or Merope are not his biological parents. Disgusted with this prophecy, he decides to go into self-exile as he cared for his parents. He decides to leave Corinth. Where shall he go? Aha! Thebes seems like a nice place. I shall go to Thebes. Back in Thebes, however, King Les had received information that something bad is coming his way. He was confused. Is it my son? Nah, I already dealt with that matter. Let me consult the oracle of Delphi. And Les leaves the small group of soldiers. On his way, he comes across a crossroad and a lone man coming from the opposite direction. He was coming from Delphi. The king orders Oedipus to step aside. Oedipus won't budge and won't take any insult. He slays the soldiers and his biological father, King Les. The first prophecy thus comes true. Oedipus then advances towards Thebes and there, on top of the city gates, he finds a terrifying winged creature which had the head of a woman and the body of a lion. The people of Thebes were tormented by this creature known as the Sphinx. The Sphinx had a dirty habit of asking a riddle to whoever entered the city gates. And if the traveller could not answer her riddle, she would eat them. The Sphinx asks Oedipus the riddle. What walks on four feet in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three at night? Aha, it's so simple. Oedipus answers, man. The Sphinx was in shock. Oedipus goes on to explain, man as an infant, he crawls on all fours. As an adult, he walks on two legs, and in old age, he uses a walking stick. Oedipus was the first to answer the riddle correctly and having heard Oedipus's answer, the Sphinx was astounded and inexplicably killed herself by throwing herself into the sea. Oedipus becomes the saviour of Thebes, so the people wanted to reward him. Queen Jocasta's brother Creon had announced that any man who could get rid of the Sphinx would be made the king of Thebes now that Laius is dead. And given the recently widowed Queen Jocasta's hand in marriage. Thus, Oedipus ends up marrying Jocasta. Oedipus and Jocasta had four children. Eteocles, Polynesus and the daughters Antigone and Ismini. Many years later, a plague of infertility struck the city of Thebes, affecting crops, livestock and the people. Oedipus asserted that he would end the pestilence. He sends his uncle Creon to the oracle at Delphi to seek guidance. When Creon returned, Oedipus learned that the murderer of King Laius must be brought to justice. Only then the plague will move from the city. Oedipus says he would exile the killer of his wife's late husband. Creon also suggested that they try to find the blind prophet Tiresias. Tiresias comes and warns Oedipus not to seek Laius's killer. Oedipus is corrupted with hubris or false pride and he taunts Tiresias to expose the truth. He insults Tiresias and Tiresias then says, You yourself are the criminal you seek. You have brought the plague, Oedipus. You are the killer of King Laius and you do not know who your parents are. Eventually, Tiresias leaves, muttering darkly that when the murderer is discovered, he shall be a native citizen of Thebes, 
brother and father to his own children and son and husband to his own mother Oedipus says this blind man does not know anything but Thaisis retorts that it is you who are blind Oedipus Oedipus tries to deny this revelation he doesn't want to believe it who would want to believe it Jocasta enters the scene and tries to calm Oedipus by telling him the story of her first born son and how he was killed off much earlier Jocasta also tells him that King Laius was believed to be murdered by bandits at a crossroad Oedipus does not know that he had actually killed Laius the mention of the crossroads near Delphi brings back old memories of a man and his gods he had murdered long back Jocasta describes how Laius looked like Hearing the description Oedipus begins to realize that he might have actually killed Laius. Oedipus fears the worst but he wants to convince himself that it is not true. Then he learns that there was a witness, a shepherd who saw the death of Laius. Bring that shepherd and let me get to the bottom of this said Oedipus. Suddenly a messenger arrived from Corinth with the news that King Polybus had died. Oedipus was relieved for the prophecy could no longer be fulfilled if Polybus whom he considered to be his birth father was now dead still he knew that his mother was still alive and refused to attend the funeral at Corinth to ease the tension the messenger then said that Oedipus was in fact adopted so don't worry about that Oedipus it emerges that this messenger was formerly a shepherd on mount Kithaeron and that he was given a baby which the childless Polybus then adopted the baby he says was given to him by another shepherd from the Laius household who had been told to get rid of the child Jocasta finally realizes that Oedipus is her son so she begs him to stop his search for Laius's murder Oedipus misunderstood her motivation thinking that she was ashamed of him because he might have been born of low birth Jocasta in great distress went into the palace where she hanged herself then the shepherd who was a witness to Laius's murder at the hands of Oedipus arrives he refuses to say anything but on the threat of torture he corroborates that Laius was killed by a single person the shepherd also sees the other shepherd from Corinth and he confirms the story of how he handed over the infant son of Jocasta to the Corinthian shepherd thus Oedipus finally realizes that the man he had killed so many years before was his father and that he had in fact married his mother in Sophocles's place Oedipus went in search of Jocasta and found that she had hanged herself using the pin from a brooch he takes off from Jocasta's gown Oedipus blinds himself and then goes out of the city he is exiled his daughter Antigone acted as his guide as he wandered through the country finally dying at Colonus where they had been welcomed by King Theseus of Athens the story of Oedipus has intrigued several thinkers and most importantly Sigmund Freud who named the attraction a male child shows towards his mother and the antagonistic feeling towards the father figure as the Oedipus complex who was Electra Electra complex what is that about Electra is the main character in two Greek tragedies Electra by Sophocles and Electra by Euripides in in neo freudian psychology the electra complex as proposed by carl jung in his theory of psychoanalysis is a girl's psychosexual competition with her mother for the possession of her father the course of her psychosexual development the complex is the girl's phallic stage the boy's analogous experience is the oedipus complex so boys have this oedipus complex during their psychosexual development and girls have the Electra complex this is what Jung proposed not Freud
Who was Electra in Greek mythology? Electra's parents were King Agamemnon and Queen Clytemnestra. Agamemnon was the brother of King Menelaus. Who was Menelaus? He was the king of Sparta. Most importantly, he was the cuckolded husband of Helen of Sparta, who later became Helen of Troy when she eloped with Paris from Troy. So when the brothers prepared to attack Troy, they had this nasty habit of sacrificing people to appease gods, to remove all kinds of obstructions. So what did Agamemnon do? He thought it was better to sacrifice his own daughter. Iphigenia is sacrificed. Her mother, Clytemnestra, is distraught. The brothers then leave for Troy and come back after several years. But by then, Clytemnestra had taken another lover, Aegisthus. She hated her husband for having murdered their daughter. She was also happy with her new lover. And so when Agamemnon returned, Clytemnestra and Aegisthus killed Agamemnon. Electra was not home when all these events happened. Later, she returns and teams up with her brother Orestes to avenge her father by murdering her mother Clytemnestra. This myth thus sets up the stage for Jung, not Freud, to come up with his notion of Electra complex.